The castle was built by the Ur Skeks at the start of Age of Harmony on the site of a mountain enclave housing the crystal, and was modeled on their own homeworld. It emitted a constant light which was felt by all of Thray, and its song was known even where it was inaudible. The castle, modified in the Garthic style, during the stewardship of the Skeksis. After the Great Division, the castle's crystalline structure stopped shining and took on a dark hue, being covered with a stone-like substance on the surface. The Skeksis took control of it and modified it in accordance with Garthic principles, presenting themselves as the successors to the Ur Skeks. Moments after the healing of the crystal, the stonework within the castle started to crumble and disintegrate and within minutes, the stone-like carapace that had covered the entire structure of the castle disintegrated, revealing the original crystalline structure beneath. This region is a beautiful plain crossed by an immense delta. Possessing long arms, big mouth, gray skin and flat faces, Gruinac were one of Thray's most prominent sentient species during the Age of Harmony. With arrival of the Skessis at the beginning of the Age of Division, the Gruinacs found themselves facing a powerful enemy. Ultimatel, the Skeksis destroyed all but two members. This unlucky pair was enslaved at the Castle of the Crystal and had their lips when shut so they could not share the cruelty of the Skeksis to others. Once renowned for their early technological advances, following their tragic extinction, Gruinac culture has been lost to the ravages of time. The Gartham were artificial lifeforms animated by the power of the Dark Crystal, intended to act as the army of the Skeksis Empire. They were created by Skek Tech during the late Age of Division, by grafting the corpses of a Gruinac and an Arotham spitter. Originally created to quell the Gelfling resistance, the Gartham were repurposed as an extermination force during the Gartham War after the Skeksis had learned of a prophecy that a Gelfling would reverse the Great Division and end their rule. Scrummunchers are necrophagous beetle-like creatures found throughout Thray. Their hungry suction cup mouths able to reduce a corpse to bare bones in mere hours. Although that may sound morbid, they actually serve an important purpose, their copious droppings return nutrients to Thray's soil much faster than regular decomposition. In the castle, they are used during grooming rituals to chew calcified dead flesh from the Skeksis' feet and other extremities. Such as the Gartham, crystal bats are another Skeksis' engineered species. Both mineral and animal, the winged beast were fitted with a hexagonal crystal at their center that allowed them to communicate with the crystal in the castle, showing what they are seeing. These bats are numerous and their creators lost most of them, those lost crystal bats live peacefully everywhere on the planet. Crawlies are small animals of very basic morphology with a furry, roughly spherical core, and two feather-like appendages on their sides. They do not have a discernible head, mouth or eyes, and it is unknown how they perceive their surroundings or feet, if at all. Despite lacking any orifices, they are shown to vocalize small squeaking noises. Their primary means of locomotion is rolling around, seemingly using their feathers to maintain stability. Rakita were lithe predators native to the region. They were hairless, quadrupedal carnivores with vestigial wings and large fangs that prevented them from closing their jaws completely. Their hairless flanks are patterned with stripes that run down the sides of their rib cages. They hunted in highly organized packs, and primarily targeted mounders and other livestock. The Skeksis briefly sought to domesticate them, but found them too hard to capture, and those that were caught proved untamable. Notable for possessing both mammalian and reptilian features, Tumbaloth have a hard shell into which they retreat to protect their soft furry limbs and head. They live in the catacombs of the castle, moving through the structures using several prehensile tentacles they shoot from the sides of their shells. The Valley of the Mystics, also known as the Valley of the Standing Stones, was a natural ravine located far from the Castle of the Crystal, situated close to the Endless Forest. 
once the site of a great river, Aura erected the first standing stones in the valley to act as sundials during the Age of Innocence. After the Great Division, the URRU settled in the valley to live in a dream of peace. The URRU later remodeled the valley as a symbol of Thray itself, with Erti, the alchemist, arranging the standing stones in such a way as to cloak the valley in a web of positive energy, which hid it from intruders. As a result, the valley became a place of legend among the Gelfling throughout the Age of Division, with the URRU only being visible as ill-defined silhouettes in daylight hours, though their wailing chants were still audible during the night. Howifrocks were arboreal creatures native to the grasslands surrounding the valley of the URRU and the Endless Forest. They were covered in long fur and bony armor that protected them during falls. Their armor grew to encompass more of their bodies as they aged, thus restricting their mobility, though this was remedied by social grooming, during which, Howifrocks would use stones to file down the armor plates of their older kin. Marais were yellow and brown colored fish native to a pool in the valley of the URRU. Together with the crickets, they were unique to that area, and were largely unknown to the rest of Thray. During the Age of Power, both marais and crickets were introduced by the newly restored Gelfling race to the rivers of the Endless Forest, so that others could admire their beauty. Crickets have long, wriggling bodies and reflective blue coloration. <laughs>